Like, that's the straw man, because there have always been women in 40k. That has always been black people in 40k. Just like gaming. Gaming has always been diverse in right. the actual meaning of the sense. The problem is that we know why they're doing this. My role here is to be the noob, because that is what I am when it comes to Warhammer and Games Workshop. So let's start here, Arch. Give me a brief overview, like a TLDR of Warhammer 40k and the overall idea of what this thing is. Okay, um, let's see. Warhammer 40k, as you, you probably know now, is a miniature tabletop war game where you use little plastic models to play out Bakshin, uh, Bakshin's battles set in the far-flung future of the 41st millennium. That's like the, uh, the core underlying idea. It was started in 1987 and was actually intended as a knockoff of Warhammer Fantasy, which was actually way more popular then, which was a knockoff of Lord of the Rings in essence. <laughs> It has grown significantly since then and has grown into a its own thing and a very unique owned thing as well that has grown enormously in the last about four or five odd years. Um, where it was always like sort of pseudo popular, but in 2020 it grew like 10 times and has now become on the verge of becoming one of the largest British like entertainment institutions. Uh, to the point where the creator and founder of Games Workshop, the company, was knighted for his wow. role in creating the company. Wow! So this is seen as a, as a um, uh, this is this is, I mean, it's a worldwide thing, very much worldwide. Yes. But it, but it started, you said, in the UK. Yes, in the UK. Okay, yeah. and uh, it's it's one of the very 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 few hobby things that actually has brick and mortar stores anymore dedicated games workshop stores they've got hundreds of these all across the globe and that's kind of where it got started because they were willing to put so much money into making this an institution because like nobody else has stores bolt action doesn't have stores or anything like that you know uh, so it became a, uh, a game franchise in its own right and it basically took over the entire wargaming scene Whereas today, Wargaming is 40k. And if anything, you spin off into other things from 40k. It's kind of become the, the base, baseline mainstream in Wargaming. So what is it about um, 40k that drew you to it? My grandmother, <laughs> of all things. Uh, she went to the toy store and she found a book which had lots of pretty colors in it. And she's like, oh, my grandchild likes uh, English words. This looks appealing. And it was the Chaos Dwarf Warhammer Fantasy Codex. Uh, that was my first entry into uh, Warhammer and eventually in 40K. A uh, very brutal se setting, which my uh, grandmother probably would not have picked up to me at uh, 10 years of age at the time. <laughs> but she had no idea, nor did the toy store have any idea what it was. So there you go. So this is a, uh, okay, so it's a tabletop game. You, you have the little miniatures, right? Is that, is that the mm -hmm. idea? Like these, you got these guys type of, these little guys? Yeah, this isn't a, yep. I don't, this, yeah, this isn't like a Warhammer a guy. Combat but, wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is a, I, I, maybe this is, I don't remember what this is, but I got the, uh, I got the, the disability wheelchair folks, which, so is this, can you find these guys in Warhammer as well? Like disability wheelchair folks? Like you can find models like it. The mm -hmm. uh, the essence is the little miniatures which you purchase, assemble, glue them together, and then you paint them yourself. And then you can go and actually do battle with them using rule sets which are referred to as codexes. Okay, so you go in and you 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 buy them. You fight your friends. Yep. Is that the idea? Or you go to the local games workshop store and set up games there. Cool. Okay, and. Uh... We're gonna we're gonna skip a whole lot here, right? So the, there's tremendous growth from the '80s. You said from '87 all the way up until now in 2020 or so, it pops off. It becomes 
Yep. A little more mainstream, I'd say. You, you said enormously, like right. yeah, partially COVID. COVID was huge because it meant that people had a lot of time inside to do things like painting and collecting and wargaming. Mm -hmm. And also, there is a suspicion because uh, a couple of companies you might have heard of, BlackRock and Vanguard, ah. now own eight percent of Games Workshop stock. When did and that? It happen? wouldn't surprise me if that happened around the same time as it took off. I was going to say, do, you, do we have uh, any dates as to when they they went into Games Workshop and they uh, they purchased that percentage of the company? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I don't think they've announced it, but they are listed on their site right now as investors. And they own how much? What what percentage of the company? About eight nine percent. The two of them. Between the two, or or uh, between each? the two. Okay, so they're almost ten percent of the company, uh, which yep, is which, which is a. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but bear in mind, these are companies that control trillions of dollars combined. Like if, if you're a company and they come to you and tell you to do something, you probably just do it. Okay, so we have uh, these two companies getting involved, and that is where we're kind of at now, correct? So over the last... I found you a, a picture there, a quick link, if you can bring that up. Sure. Uh, and you select the uh, the max time period for the stock prices. Uh, there you will see the enormous jump around like 2016, and then an even bigger jump at uh, 2020. You, you can see an, a, a pretty hefty jump there that begins in 2015 and then explodes in 2020 or 2019. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 So so at the tail end, it really, I, I mean, it, it really starts escalating in 2016, as you said. But for mm -hmm. the most part, this is a so this is a publicly traded company going back to 1995, yep, and it is old. Yeah, it's stayed level for I mean, for the better part of two decades, and you know saw some growth, right? But then it then it really popped off. Holy moly, that's insane to see how much yes. that grew. That's crazy, and it's seen its ups. And so, what happened here? What happened between? Uh, I guess. 2021, September 2021, and uh, October 2022. Why was there this giant dip? The end of the COVID boost, uh, in large parts. Okay. As uh, the company was founded in 1983, it's very old. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you say, like they were beginning to scratch on the doors of the mainstream uh, that they saw the little growth, and then COVID saw an enormous boost. And then, of course, eventually the COVID sales began to fall off. The investors started to back off a little bit. And then we have another enormous boost. So uh, BlackRock Vanguard probably came in either in 2022 or in 2020, depending on how visionary they were being. Yeah, they own, here's BlackRock, 6.56% and Vanguard, 4.94%. So even more than eight now, which is crazy. And there's yeah, JP Morgan down there. Interesting. Well, chat was saying, you know, 11, uh, 11%, you know, which is a pretty good chunk of uh, a company, especially enough to, to make a decision or two when it comes to uh, things. So, okay. So that we're fast forwarding now. We uh, we're in 2024 and this is, you said this started in 1983, yep. um, developed a very hardcore audience over the last 40 years um, that is built all around community, literally going to places and, you know, physical locations, very unique and getting together with friends, meeting new friends, competing against each other, playing against each other, um, and more or less building a community. Um, the pushback that I see now is that they have, uh, now there's female characters for the first time with this. Well, there, there have always been female characters, actually. That's okay. the thing. Uh, 40K has never been particularly exclusionary, other than it costs an arm and a leg to play the game. Games Workshop has never bought anyone from their shops, uh, so long as you're willing to sell a kidney to pay them for their plastic crack. <laughs> uh, we've, we've even had armies of all-female characters before, the Sisters of Battle and uh, the Sisters of Silence as well, as well as male armies. In fact... All male armies or all female armies are a rarity, as most of the species in 40k. Uh, well, the universe sucks so much that most don't really have the luxury to recruit only one gender. 
Uh, but the custodies were an all-female, an all-female, an all-male force. That's why the sudden addition of a female character to it is very weird. Just like if you suddenly had a male Sisters of Battle, for example, it would just be crazy. Okay, so that's the difference, is that the custodies throughout their entire history have been male. And now yes. they're saying there are females, and there's always been females. Is that is that accurate? Correct. because uh, And I think that's the thing that's really important to point out as well, the fact that they claim that they've always been around now. Because if they were simply retconning it, you know, all settings have retcons. All ret settings have changed in lore on occasion, stuff like that. So if they simply came out and said, okay, we're changing this because, you know, BlackRock owns us at this point. All right, fair enough. But no, instead they say, it's always been this way. That's very... Because How do I put it? At least if you're being honest, then okay, you made this decision for external purposes. All right? Sucky, but okay. But now you're lying about it. That's weird. So why would you, why would you do that? So you as, as a fan and, and millions of other people across, across the world uh, feel like you're getting gaslit, more or less. Definitely. Like, this is some unironic 1984 stuff. Like, we have always been at war with East Asia that have always been female custodies. Right. So, and that, that's where the pushback comes from this. And it, it's kind of like, no, 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 no. That sky is red, and it's always been red, mm -hmm. even though you're looking up there and you see that it's blue. Yes. Okay. Uh, and again, we, this is in the source material. Like, Games Workshop's own law books have stated there are only male custodies, multiple times so then see the same company go no 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 uh we've been wrong for the last 20 years it's very weird is this the uh is this one of the images that you sent to us uh that we, should we pull up one of these images here um yes the uh, the first one is the part of the law blurb where they introduce the female custodies so this is the one where they have a custodian and they give her she pronouns so this is the female custodies Okay, and when did this take place? Uh, this is the one that happened just now, the last few days. Okay. And, and the, uh, the other picture that I sent you is the uh, source book, uh, where they say here that the custodians all the way at the top are the infant sons of the noble houses of Terra. Hence, hence, hence being the, uh, male. Right. Yes, and this is one of several mentions, uh, all the way back to the original, where they say specifically that these men, custodies, never leave Terra. So I'm going to read this. It says, It is known that all custodians begin their lives as the infant sons of the noble houses of Terra. It is a mark of incredible prestige to, sur to surrender one's child to this most glorious of callings within the Imperium. And many noble, uh, no, uh, notable clans amongst the Terran uh, arist arist aristocracy have willingly given up their most entire generations of newborn sons to earn it. So this is a, so the custodians. It, this is a very prestigious honor for for families to put their uh, their sons into. Absolutely. They are the uh, elite bodyguards of the God Emperor of Humanity. So there's pretty much no more prestigious calling. Wait, wait, say, say that one more time. I just want you to repeat that. They're the what? The elite bodyguards of the God Emperor of Humanity. The, the elite bodyguard guard of the God Emperor of Humanity. Did I say that correctly? Correct. That's the most badass thing I've ever said in my life. I'm just going to say right now, that is absolutely amazing. Um, okay. Okay. So, so there is lore here. The story says that these are sons and, uh, let's go over to, to Grums now. Cause Grum, Grums has been big on everything that's been happening here. Grums says, uh, Warhammer 40 K is retconning lore for wokeness. Warhammer custodians is blowing up in the community. Uh, Oceana has always been at war <laughs> with East Asia. One look Great at the major. Like. I'm sorry. Great minds think alike. Yes. Uh, ESG operates indirectly, but BlackRock and Vanguard operate directly when they own shares right here. So uh, there's a tweet from the actual Warhammer, you know, X handle says in regards to female mm -hmm. custodians, there have always been female custodians since the first of the 10,000 were created. Is this 
right okay this is right here and they're including this it is known that all custodians begin their lives as the infant oh and this is the response here i guess right here yep so i i guess you you have to feel confused when it comes to comes to this and uh have there ever been i'm, I'm imagining when you when you go out and you buy you know your your little figurines is that am i using the correct terminology there figurines or is figurines, there miniatures okay. models okay so when you go, we'll say models when you go out and buy a model has there ever been a female custodian that you could buy no uh there has never been a female custodies model there has never been a female custodies in the art and there's never been a female custodies mentioned in the lore in the um well 30 years that the custodies have been referred to Okay, so never once. And that's why people are like, what the hell are you talking about, right? Okay. Um, are you familiar with Nick Davis, this person? This uh, this person over uh, on X, he worked for old, Games Workshop. Old school GW employee, I believe, yes. I don't know if you saw his his post about this, um, and I, but I wanted to read through this. It says, I worked for Games Workshop for a very specific part of part of its history. I started in the mail order trolls and worked my way up in the studio, finishing finishing out my career with GW, working on White Dwarf Magazine, UK and then US edition. I'm a, is that like the official magazine? Yep, that's the hobby magazine. Okay. During my time at the company, especially during my White Dwarf years, I had one mission. I wanted to share the joy of, War, of the Warhammer hobby uh, gave me to lift up the that mystic veil and show uh, who you, the average gamer like me, could participate no matter no matter your skill level. In short, some of the mystery out of of what is dry dry brushing. I don't, what is dry brushing? Painting technique. Okay, figured as much. Uh, I like to think I mostly succeeded in that mission, and I am and I am heartened when I hear uh, from now from now vets in the hobby who cite me as a positive influence. The hobby, as I like to call it, is supposed to be fun, a, a uniting force between gamers to create friendships, a social function, I'm guessing, um, something to be shared and enjo uh, enjoyed and shared. You never were supposed to build silos of lore uh, because the idea, the very idea, the Warhammer and Warhammer 40K universe was the history was so, uh, was the history was so, was so convoluted and fragmented that there was no such thing as fact. Everything was supposed to contradict. That was the purpose. That being said, I'm overjoyed seeing the hobby that once gave me a means to live being so inclusive, seeing female LGBTQ plus gamers and seeing them represented at the highest level of GW toy soldiers is pure joy. I love it. Uh, I wish I had seen more of it during my time at Games Workshop. Well, Games Workshop. But we are here now, and you've made this old white dwarfer very, very proud. Play well. And uh, Grum says the uh, pretty much the lore is meant to be full of contradictions and devoid of fact on purpose. What are your thoughts on hearing hearing that? Uh, well, see, this is a thing that is often brought up by the opposition in these regards. That 40k never had law. It's always been contradictionary. This is bullshit. Uh, an abject lie because well I'll, I'll give you a link here to a web page this is the black library the uh novel publishing arm of games workshop they have been releasing books for decades um there is so much law there are so many books there are so many stories in 40k that to say that there is no law here is nonsensical we have dozens long series of novels. We have countless codexes, all telling us the same story. The lore of 40K remained practically perfectly consistent for 20 years. Like Amongst all of the various science fiction settings out there, 40K is one of the most internally consistent. So this idea that nothing matters because the company could potentially change something is absurd. And not to mention, if you don't have canon, if you don't have lore, then you don't have a setting, do you? Like, you must have some base fundament. Otherwise, why are you playing 40K? You might as well go out in the forest and pick some mushrooms and rocks and bash them against each other. Like, Because if the setting doesn't matter, surely that would be the exact same. 
Well, and I think that's the thing from the out from an outside looking in. This is like, I don't know if uh, if Star Wars was like, yeah, everything that you know, it you know, it's all open to interpretation. It doesn't really well, matter. That is what they're doing. Well, that is okay. literally what Disney's doing. So it's it is the perfect example because that is accurate. Right. Okay. Then then pick. Any, any, anything you'd ever want. Okay. Well, let's, let's bring it like to sports, right? If, 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 uh, the national basketball association was like, yeah, everything that happened before doesn't, doesn't really matter. We're just going to do like a, it's almost, it almost feels like a hard reset of, of this. That yes. makes sense. And that, that is the point of it as well. Cause, uh, to put it like this, this would be like, you're talking about basketball and you go like, okay, who, who are the greatest players? Somebody brings up Michael Jordan. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, he, he, he was great. And somebody goes, he? Michael Jordan was a woman. Yeah. Right, right. Hold on, excuse me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, he was always a woman. Uh, that, that's what's happening here. Because we know this wasn't the case. This hasn't been in doubt. Like, you can't just say, oh, the, the Lord has been contradictionary. No, the Lord has always been, the custodians have always been male. Like, it falls apart at the very first moment of inspection. If all of the pictures of Michael Jordan is as him as a man, if all of the recordings out of him as a man, if every voice recording sounds like a man, you've got to kind of conclude that Michael Jordan was probably a man. You would think. You would think so, for sure. Um, but so what they're saying right now, despite all of everything, literally every point of media pointing to these custodies being males, now they're saying, nope, by the way, they've always been that way. And that's yep. that's where the uh the the giant confusion like so yes. So you as a fan, what do you 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 say something about this and all of a sudden you are labeled a bigot now because because you right. are just pointing out the obvious that they're lying to you? Well, that's the next step, because um you, you thought we were going deep on the 40K. Oh, God, no. Now, now we're going to go deep. Because I can explain why this is happening. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Let's do it, Arch. Um, this is all part of the same movement. Uh, as I mentioned, I, uh, I did a video on this a couple times now with one I did today, uh, breaking down the roots of this. Because this is all a political agenda coming in here. Vanguard, BlackRock, they have a political agenda, which we know as ESG in DEI. But to really understand this, we've got to go back to 1930s Europe. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, with a man by the name of Antonio Gramsci. Have you ever heard of him? No. Oh, really? Dev hasn't Antonio told you about what? Gramsci. I'm surprised. Okay. All right, I'm doing a little digging. Antonio Gramsci was an Italian socialist uh, who was defeated by Mussolini, the other flavor of socialism in Italy, and imprisoned for the rest of his life. Gramsci was an absolute and utter genius of political philosophy. He was beyond clever. And he is the reason why this is happening to us today, because of the political doctrine that he created. And what was that? Um, he came up with the idea. So we got to go back to the 1800s now. All right, I swear we'll, we'll stop there. <laughs> All right. Uh, but the various socialist uh, theories and thinkers of the time were like, okay, um, the world is unjust, the peasants will recognize this, and the proletariat will rise up against the monarchies, against the capitalists, and they will create a more equal state, the communist state, the socialist state. But then years passed, and years passed, and years passed, and decades passed, and the peasants refused to rise up. And so a lot of the socialists are wondering, what the fuck's going on here? Because even the revolution in Russia, who, who started in the Russian Revolution? It wasn't the peasantry. It wasn't the workers. It was Lenin, a man from Germany sent to Russia with the express intent of destabilizing Russia. And his revolutionaries were from the cities. In fact, the Russian revolutionaries would go on then to primarily persecute the farmers, the people who were supposed to be rising up. And the theory then was like, okay, how do we explain why the peasants aren't fucking revolting? Like, They'll be better off under socialism, surely. And uh, Mussolini decided to solve this problem by launching his own violent revolution. Uh, Gramsci, on the other hand, thought to himself, okay, the peasants aren't revolting because capitalism and democracies have built the world around them. 
They have they've built the prison where people live in normality and think, okay, this is just how the world works now. Uh, why should I fight against it? Capitalism is normal. Democracy is normal. There's no point in resisting, especially as I'm pretty happy. I'm fat. I have a roof over my head. Life's good. Why would I, why would I risk all of this by picking up a gun? And so Gramsci thought that the revolution was impossible unless all of those structures of normalcy, all of the institutions around you, all of the ideas and thoughts of modern democracy needed to be replaced by socialist ideals. Only then, once the world had already been culturally captured, could the revolution commence. Okay. So what's That's this a lot to, to devour. With, what does that have to do with Warhammer 40K in the year 2024? Well, this was a very long-term plan because this idea of cultural capture began then and has been going on all the way up until now. Where the idea is you don't capture the institutions directly. You don't march up to the Capitol building and go, socialism, please. You go into a hobby and you go, wouldn't it be nice if this was more equitable and d- diverse? both socialist political points. And then you browbeat them. You go like, That's, it's very it's very racist what you're doing here. Shouldn't we fix this? And since our world of normality, racism is bad, we go, oh, oh, oh okay, sure. We, we've got some black people in here. We'll put in some more. And they go, okay, that's nice, but you're not speaking to the systemic systems of racism you've got here. And they're like, oh, okay, uh, how do we fix it? And then you bring them into the structures. Now they begin to change the values of society. Before, um, think of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. It was an example of diversity and representation that was entirely natural. We were just like, okay, wouldn't it be funny if we had a black family who behaves basically like white people, and then we add in Will Smith, who's the ghetto kid. All right, cool. Everybody loved it. Everybody adored it. And we had a whole wave of diverse sitcoms with black characters, for example, and black stand-up comedians. Right. That was natural. This is not natural. Because 40K always has had black characters. It's always had women characters. And so to then go in and say, it's not enough, is the political ideology. Because then you get in, you get authority, you get power, and then you begin instituting further reforms. Until eventually you arrive at the position that Star Wars arrived at a few years ago, where the past must die, kill it if you have to, because now you're replacing what came before. This is the same reason why we're tearing down statues, for example, because we cannot acknowledge the past because the past is of the old system and we are trying to replace that system. We are trying to eradicate it entirely. Can we take a step back really quick? (laughs) Absolutely. Who, Who started Warhammer? Was there one individual person? There were five people, I think, that started uh, Warhammer uh, Games Workshop back in 1983. Okay. Of those five people, they're the people who created the original lore of this. Yes. Uh, sort of, yes. What are What's their stance on this? Have they said anything publicly about this in, uh, in the last them- couple of days? Most of them are not around anymore. I think one passed away uh, recently, and the ones that aren't around are not really involved in this anymore. So most of the setting right now revolves around either the lore writers or the people who worked at Games Workshop in some form of capacity uh, previously. Like the example you brought up, for example. Merely having worked at GW gives you a certain gravitas on the discussion. Right. Because they say they, they were there. They were there. They know how this works. They dealt with it on a day-to-day basis, right? Um, okay, so so none of the original founders are there. A uh, case says Steve Priestley is still alive. So uh, I, I'd, I'd be curious, okay, and uh, I guess Steve Jackson, and I, I don't know who these people are. I'm, I'm assuming that they are uh, they're the original folks behind it. I'd be yep. curious if somebody's reached out to them uh, and, and said, hey, what are your thoughts what are your thoughts on this? Well, you know, was has there ever been female custodes, uh, or custodies um, uh, along here, and, and to get their thoughts? Because at the end of the day, this, this feels like <clears throat> this feels almost like if it, you know, going to like a, a larger IP like Disney, if uh, if Disney was like, oh, by the way, 
uh, Mickey Mouse is also uh, gay. And <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. no, no. He's been the girl, the boyfriend of uh, Minnie Mouse for this entire uh, existence. And they're like, no, 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 no. That's not Minnie Mouse anymore. Uh, that's it's actually Minnie Mouse. That's Max Mouse. And, and uh, Minnie Mouse is now trans. But that's kind of what this feels like. Yes. And of course, this is done for, again, political reasons. That's the key of it. This is, um, I, um, I, I know this is a lot to uh, absorb. <laughs> Right off the yeah, bat, this is a lot. But maybe I can, um, I can, I can bring up like a simpler example of this, right? Uh, the, the, you know, the original Pride flag, I'm sure. Right? Yes. Uh, Pride began as a movement mm-hmm. with genuine complaints. Okay, like we are being harassed. We want to have the same rights as everybody else. Okay, entirely fair enough. And it had a pride flag that remained unchanged for about 30 years because most of their political grievances were simply just treat us like everybody else. Nothing wrong with that. Then uh, in 2017, Philadelphia commissioned their own pride flag. That's the one with the black and the brown stripes on top. Now, what does race have to do with pride? Right. Nothing. Right. Like, the entire point of pride was that it was universally humanist. You can be gay and black or brown or yellow or white. It doesn't really matter. So now they added race into it. That was weird. And immediately thereafter, just a couple of years, the trans pride flag was invented. And then a year after that, the trans and intersex pride flag was invented. And just a couple of weeks ago, London created their own pride flag with two pyramids now eating into the pride colors. Actually, send it to uh, Blabs here. Uh, This is a beautiful illustration of what happens as the ideology grows more and more political, because you're ever pushing forwards toward a more socialist future, a more equity, more diversity, etc., etc., until eventually the original pride colors, they're now half of the flag. That's so stupid. (laughs) Yes, it is. But it's it's a brilliant representation of what happens. Pride starts out as non-political insofar as we just want the same rights. Nothing wrong with it. Then we add a little bit, then we add a little bit, then we add a little bit, and eventually the pride part of the flag is just going to be a little roundel up in the corner somewhere. Wait, how come black and brown are on there twice? <laughs> because oh, London is extra diverse. Flag, I think. Extra. All right. All right. Wow. This is, it is, will this flag be the, the planet Earth flag soon? <laughs> Well, aren't they trying to like combine all of Europe into one country or something? Some weird ass crap now. European Union, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, well, they're, they're trying to like rebrand it or some weird. Thing. Well, hold on, hold on, Arch. But you're just a white guy. You're just a white yeah. guy who loves Warhammer, you bigot, right? You're just a white guy. What about what? What do women feel about this, Blabs? <laughs> Blabs, you uh, you put that out there a second ago, yes. Yeah, uh, well, I can share this now, actually. Hang on. Because, think, shout out to Skirmitar for sending me this. Skirmitar's a fan of yours, Arch. Um, apparently, a woman have actually been calling this out. So this is an account saying, I'm a female player. I have Ultra Marines, Orcs, Chaos Marines, and I collect various minis that I enjoy, like Grimaldus, I'm assuming. From now on, I'll be printing, I'll be 3D printing, I will pirate your books and share them with all of my friends for free. This pandering is insulting and condescending. And then it turns out that they actually blocked her instead. So it's, um, there it is. Uh-huh. Hang on, where is it? Oh, I've lost it. But yeah, supposedly she's been blocked now. She has been. For her response. I, uh, I have the screenshot. Yep, of there it, it is. I used in my video too. Yeah. So Amazing. Warhammer is now... Uh, anytime they see pushback, they'd rather just block it and say, no, no, they're, they're a gaslighting their audience and be like, no, 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 that doesn't exist either. By the way, you're a bigot, you know, on the, on the other yes. side of this. Uh, because all of the, let's be politically correct here, female identifying bodies I've spoken to, <laughs> they've all simply said that they, the, this thing, too, 40K is a very male-dominated hobby because it's all about war. It's all about violence. It's all about conflict, right? It's sure. not the thing that normally appeals to the fair agenda. But all of them have said, we already have female representation. We have Sisters of Battle. We have Sisters of Silence. We have female Imperial Guard. All of this already exists. 
So there is plenty of representation, but that's, again, not to the point of this. It isn't to have a little bit of representation. You must make all of it compliant with your technology, uh, technology, your ideology, because if there remains any element of exclusivity in the setting whatsoever that benefits the non-left wing, that is negative, because this is, again, a political ideology. See, again... Perhaps this is the best example. If this was an honest observation, right? They were like, okay, we're genuinely worried that there's not enough female players, so we want a little bit of representation. All right, fair enough. Uh, what about an entire army of, uh, of uh, females? Like, okay, but that's not good enough. Why not? Well, because we're pushing a political ideology here, and if we are ever happy, we can't continue pushing it. That's probably the most salient example of it. This uh, says, please mention repressive tolerance. What is that a reference to? Repressive tolerance is uh, probably the most effective tool of the progressive. Um, it was originally a term invented by Herbert Marcuse. Herbert Marcuse came up with this idea that it is not enough to be equal, because if we simply exist in the current day, then we're neutral. You know, nothing, nothing really goes forward. We must be actively political. And to be this, we need repressive tolerance. The idea for repressive tolerance is that you extend maximum charitability to your political allies. So whatever they say, you interpret it in the best possible light. So um, the feminist movement, when somebody holds up a jug saying male tears, you go, oh, that's just a joke. They don't mean it. When they say kill all men, like it's, it's, they're just kidding. They're just kidding. Then when somebody on not on your side says something like, okay, then kill all women, you go, ah, evil, misogynistic, hate crime, as you extend no charitability at all to the opposing side. And as you continue to do this, and you make this a natural part of the culture, obviously, everyone else who is outside, because 90% of people know nothing about politics, right? All they then will hear is people going, oh, no, no, feminists, good. They're just joking. But the men are oh, misogynist, evil. They're not joking. It's a way to color the dialect. And that's that's what you feel is happening here with Games Workshop. They're they're uh, they're removing all those who are uh, in, the, in the case of uh, of this woman here. You know, um, she was saying she was being yes. somewhat critical, just saying like, "Hey, I, I don't want this," and they're saying, "No, no, no." We're going to block you out and, uh, you know, but but they'll obviously praise people who will go in and be like, oh, this is wonderful. And they yes. elevate the voices while blocking out the dissent. It also allows them to say things that are literally contrary. I'll give you uh, an example there. I'll send it to you. Blabbering. Uh, blabs? Blabbering blabs? Yes. Blabbering. Close enough for government to... work. Right. Uh, where you begin with Star Wars. So another example. They launch a Pride Month special. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Pride Month special. So this is um, uh, the other one I sent you, the first one. So many images, man. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I know this is some deep nonsense. Yeah, well, that's what we're doing here. This is great. This is there great. we go. Can you make this a little bigger, Bob? The blabs, can you? Uh... There you go. So this, by definition, then, by the left's definition, everything is political. This is political. Right? Because it's, hey, Star Wars, it has nothing to do with current year politics, but we're going to make it about current year politics by taking a our world celebration pride and slapping it on Star Wars. And we're going to put all of the stuff in it, the queer representation, all of that. Wait. A political hold act, surely. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Doesn't Star Wars take place in a galaxy far, far away a long time ago? Isn't that the whole idea behind Star Wars? <laughs> Is that, isn't that the whole idea? It is, but that is the politicization. And here comes the guy saying, don't make Star Wars political. And Star Wars then says, queer characters isn't political. How does one square this circle? Everything is political, but our politics aren't politics. Right. So this is Star Wars is... Like that, their actual response. Wow. This isn't. Yeah, yep. you should see years ago. I don't know who was running their accounts, but they were running their mouths a couple of times. Hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, they even made Luke Skywalker. Was he like bisexual now or some shit? Uh, Luke Skywalker is officially queer. Correct? Yes. As what? is Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Oh, 
poor Craig. He's so lost. What are you talking about? What? I'm dead serious. They have said that Luke Skywalker is a gay, bisexual. Let me. I'll send you the picture of the uh, the the oh, fandom. Oh yeah, there we link. go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Fandom thing, or is this an official thing? This is fa this is real. No. Yep. Luke Skywalker, LGBTQ. Uh, Obi Wan. Wait, Marin well. is a lesbian. <laughs> what is this? Wait. How can she be a lesbian? She totally had a boner for Cal Kestis in the game. I hadn't played the second one, but oh, okay. <laughs> as is Tarkin. Yeah, well. that was so stupid, that one. And then he dies. So they literally made a character gay and then blow him up. <laughs> Tells yep. you everything. Wait, what? Yes, Craig, I, you are uh, so I am, not I'm, connected to this stuff. It's amazing how much you've missed out. So okay. blissfully ignorant. Yes, okay. Skywalker's gay. Bye, whatever it is. Here's the thing. Like, in, literally in what Star Wars world does it matter whose penis or vagina they're into? Right? Like, well, the thing is, he's not yeah. actually, he married, he had a wife. Her name was Mara Jade. They had children. It's fine. And there's the thing. It doesn't matter, but now you're beginning to see the, the greater picture here. So what's actually happening? So Gramsci saw that our world was the normal world. Our capitalist world was the normal world, right? All of that was normal, and that's what we need to destroy. Well, having non-politicized things is a part of our normal. Having escapism is our normal. It is a way to disengage from politics. But if your express intent, as Gramsci's was, was to politicize everything, you can't allow that. You have to go into escapism, into hobbies, and go, no, Luke Skywalker was gay. Obi-Wan Kenobi was gay. It has nothing to do with Star Wars. It has to do with pushing the politics into it to make sure that there is nowhere you can go that is not politicized. And furthermore, the moment things have been politicized, then steps in Herbert Marcuse and says, everyone that is for me is good. Everyone who is against me is bad. Hmm. Well, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> it is. And again, the brilliance of this plan that Grenchy came up with was that none of this requires coordination. None of this requires some grand overarching conspiracy. There isn't some shadowy group of leftists agreeing to do this. It's all baked into the doctrine. Everything is political. Does this naturally? They don't have to push it. They don't have to have a boardroom meeting. This is simply how they think naturally. And you see, you know, you see this right here. Um community managers at Warhammer have started blocking <laughs> accounts, <laughs> mocking or questioning the retcon of 40k yep. custodies. Um, this is Goblin Slaya says, are you adding misters, misters of battle and brothers of silence too soon? Is that is that a, uh, are those male only uh, groups as well? Uh, the sisters of uh, the misters of battle are a play on the sisters of battle. The sisters of battle are an all female faction of warrior space nuns. Oh, so you just you'll wait and see in a couple of years, or maybe even next week, they'll be like, Oh, no, they're actually trans women, so that way it reverts to all men. Oh, absolutely, there they probably will be. Uh, I sent you a picture of the sisters of battle there. Uh, they're all female, and the sisters of silence are all female. But again, this is where the repressive tolerance comes in. This is good because female representation is good. And therefore, we don't need to add in male representation because male representation is bad. Look at Craig. Wow. He's kind of mind blown. I think he's still mind blown on Luke Skywalker being gay. Well, well uh, okay. But, but hold on. Let's, let's back up because they said that's not canon, right? No. Who, Luke Skywalker is not canon? No, no, no. They were talking to me. Saying that Luke Skywalker, that Luke and has a wife and children, they took that away. Disney. Oh, they didn't oh, remove that. On that. Yeah, so that's no longer canon, and now he's gay, bisexual, whatever. They took away the nuclear family from uh, Luke Here. Skywalker. Understand that? Let me so let me just hammer this point home for you. Uh, this is Mark Hamill uh, quoted as saying, "Of course, Luke Skywalker is gay." <laughs> 
I just, just, just in just in case for some reason you didn't accept it at face value. <laughs> Jesus. What the hell does that mean? Of course, like, are you supposed to look at somebody? Meal. I thought the whole idea was it that that uh, that you can't tell. Oh, right? but this is from 2016 when he was like hobschnobbling Disney's dick and everything. It, mm -hmm. It's fine. Wow, I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to think about something that I'm like a uh, uh, let's say okay Street Fighter right. I'm wearing a Street Fighter shirt. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to like correlate this with something and like if they were like listen ryu by the way um i know that he's peak masculinity and he walks around with his shirt off um and he's only in it for the fight uh but uh no not anymore uh by the way he's a woman <laughs> and it's like well I'm, I'm you know i that's i get it i get why people would be upset about this i get the confusion of of uh, why people would look at this and be like, I like, you're clearly gaslighting here. And I, I think that's, you know, it, it, whether when it comes to star Wars in particular, right. You have George Lucas. Has anybody gone to George, George Lucas and be like, Hey, is Luke Skywalker gay? No, but he's literally come out and said that he likes what Disney's doing. Was it like last month or whatever? So he's probably like, yeah. Cause he's yeah, like, I he's like the number one shareholder, isn't he? So he has to agree with Disney. So that they stay afloat. So he gets more money. Okay. But I mean, and this is, this is the thing too. I remember oppressive tolerance. Even if you went to George Lucas and he said, Star Wars is not gay. They would simply say, George Lucas doesn't matter, death of the author, fuck it, George Lucas. And if he says he is gay, they will go, yes, see, even the creator thinks he's gay. Right. There, there doesn't need to be any sort of a coherent position here. Like, that's not the point. It's a, uh, what, what is that famous Vorsch quote? My, uh, my ideal is not to uh, lose as a socialist, it is to win as a socialist. There is no value in principled failure. Jeez, there's a lot here. Craig. So, okay, so I want to be really clear. It's not. It's not that there's females, like you're, you and other fans are not upset because there's females in this faction now. You're upset that they put them in there and then just straight up gaslit you because of it. Is that right? And is that is that the feeling that I'm getting from this? Well, uh, again, there there's never been an objection to having women in 40K. Uh, the Sisters of Battle have been around since, oh, God, when were they introduced? At least 10 plus years now, I'm thinking. I've, I've even had art made of Sisters of Battle because they're goddamn awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the more popular characters from the 40K Horus Heresy novels, or 30K, correctly, female characters. Um no one objects to there being women in 40k. Like, that's the straw man, because there have always been women in 40k. That have always been black people in 40k. Just like gaming. Gaming has always been diverse in right. the actual meaning of the sense. The problem is that we know why they're doing this. They're changing the law. They are lying to us. And we can see all the hallmarks of why this is happening. If, if this occurred in a vacuum, then nobody will, they would just look at it and go, all right, weird, but I suppose. But when you know Antonio Gramsci, when you know uh, repressive tolerance, when you have seen this in Star Wars, when you've seen this in Marvel, when you've seen this in movies and television for 10 years now, this is not a neutral act. This is a malicious act. Who's doing it? Who's causing it? Is it the community managers? Is this is this the writers? Who is who are I mean, you, you know, you can say BlackRock and Vanguard, but somebody inside of Games Workshop is is making these decisions, whether it's through pressure from these companies or you know, but so who's pulling the like who's making the decisions to to make these changes? Do we have do we know that? Is there a CEO of the company that is that this is trickling down from? We, we do know more or less. Um, so 
again, the beauty of this political ideology is that it doesn't require centralized leadership. You simply take something like diversity and equity, because this attacks the idea of racism in the West, because we've always been very touchy on this subject. We don't like racism. We like everything to be equal. We like everything to be fair. These are our values. Uh, the Soviets use this against us constantly, because this is a point to attack us where we go like, we're not racist. And you can use this to push things. So when you simply say things must be more diverse, that sounds good to people on the, the face of it. And so simply saying we need diversity and then never stopping will inevitably push it towards more of a progressivist position. Uh, as for the people pushing it directly, they are largely the writers, first and foremost, and the community managers. We know for a fact that many of the writers are very woke, uh, we know even that there is a contract. So one of them mentioned um, during a little rant that there were certain things they were not allowed to talk about under the contract from Games Workshop. One of those things was me. I was mentioned by name in the contract they need to sign. They are not allowed to say my name in any tweet or in any official capacity whatsoever. Wait, hold on. Back up. What? <laughs> How yes. how how did how were you brought into this? I know we've talked about in the past that that you had to remove Warhammer from your name for legal actions mm -hmm. and and all that stuff because your original name was Arch Warhammer, right? Now yes. it's just Arch. How are you that? Are you that big of a thorn in the side? I am very no infamous in this community. <laughs> what? That what, are, did, um... what did you do? Well, I've been arguing against this wokeist on the stuff for since the beginning, um, because I, every everybody else thought that forty k forty k can't be taken over by wokeism. It's so obviously right wing, and it is forty k as a setting is inherently right wing, and so everyone, this this will never happen. I was sitting there, I was looking at movies, I was looking at Star Wars, I was looking at Marvel, and going, no, no, uh, because they don't care about the setting. It, it, ha it, ne it doesn't need to make sense. Like, saying that Captain America is woke, which has happened, doesn't make sense. They'll do it anyway. They don't care about the internal consistency of the universe. They don't care about this being logical. They care about winning. And anything else is, well, not relevant. And since I'm the one who's been talking about it probably the most and the most vehemently and the largest who's talking about it, I became the target. Uh, I know Games Workshop, for example, also bans anyone that they collaborate with from working with me. I had a sponsorship with uh, a World of Warships by Wargaming. I right. made the video, I sent it in, they accepted it, I put it up on my channel, and then I say received another email saying that I need to take it down. Why? Because Wargaming had received an email from Games Workshop saying that they did not wish to be affiliated with me in any way. That was... God, like five or six years ago, probably. Wow. That's crazy, to say the least. But, but there had to have been a specific instance where, where Games Workshop were like, that's the guy, he's the devil. We're, you, nobody can talk about this guy. And I, I, was there a specific instance that they, that they, were, that they felt, that, once again, you're saying that they that in their contracts they kind of they can't make reference to you as a human. Yes. They cannot mm -hmm. speak about me. I am he who cannot be named. Are you Voldemort? Yes. Got There's it. even uh, even rules on the official uh, uh, lore Reddit and the fan Reddits that I cannot be brought up. So you're telling me right now if somebody was to go to Reddit, the the. Uh, the Games Workshop Reddit, the Warhammer 40k Reddit, and they're like, "Hey, did you see Arch on side scrollers today?" That it they would could be removed. Be banned for that. Uh, yes, uh, if you were to put one of my videos on the lore Reddit or on the most of the fan lore Reddits, it will be removed. Wow! So even us having this conversation, this is like, no, you can't, you can't have that conversation. You're not allowed to talk about it. Like that doesn't seem very inclusive. It's, it's not, but again, weaponized hypocrisy. My position good, your position bad. Wow. You're I'm a horrible so person. You're, you're clearly a horrible person, Arch. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I, I don't even know where to go with this anymore. I, I usually have like a nice little path I'd like to take here. Oh, I guess the next step is what's, I mean, what's next? What do you do? Do you actually, uh, can you fight this? Or is it, hey, we just need to make our own Warhammer 40K and, and do our own thing because ultimately, you know, the free market will decide. Or is it long past that point to where you will eventually just be crushed and you must submit? Like, what? how do you fight against this? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? So this Sounds again like really gets very complicated. Question. Yeah. Um, back in the day when this first started happening in 2014 odd, and the first like resistance began against it, like Game Gate won, as I know Dev has given you the full timeline of that previously. Dev in the chat, by the way, what's up? Hello, Dev. So back then, none of us had any idea what was happening um i i still to this day vividly remember watching a sargon video uh where he said if only i could talk to anita sarkeesian i could explain to her that video games aren't sexist which is ridiculous because anita sarkeesian doesn't care about sexist video games anita sarkeesian cares about getting paid for criticizing sexist video games because they weren't interested in having a discussion. When they said video games are sexist, that wasn't them going like, hey, guys, I, I, think, I think I've come onto something here. They were saying it because that was the political thing to do. That was the oppressive tolerance in action. My opinion, good. Your opinion, bad. And it took us four or five years easy to begin unveiling the levels of this and figuring out that cultural Marxism was involved at all. It took forever. And by the time we did all of our institutions were already taken over. Like, Star Wars was already fully taken over from the inside out. Games Workshop has been... I mean, Games Workshop has actively denounced their own setting now several times, saying that it's evil and racist and fascist, etc. They are already so deep inside of these companies that it will be very difficult to get them out. Now, Star Wars has kind of begun to turn around. Like Bob Iger said on several earning calls now that he wished to try and take the politics out of Disney because they're starting to see the losses piling up. And over a long period of time, the repeated failures of entertainment, box office flops, etc., will begin to turn companies around because as you keep losing money sooner or later, you're going to have to go, why aren't we earning anything? But... All of these large companies are enormous. It takes years and years even for them to notice. Because if one Pixar movie flops, all right, big deal, it, it happens. Two movies flops, okay, what's happening? Three movies flopped, now you're starting to look into it. And then you need to then go in and go, okay, I've identified what's happening. It's wokeism, people don't like it. Then you need to go through with all of the stuff you're already producing, and only then... After like years and years of this, can you start putting in programming that isn't woke? So all of this takes years. And Games Workshop is still profitable and will remain profitable for quite some time because it will take a very long time for them to go fully woke in a product sense. By the time that happens, and then by the time they start realizing that it's happening, it's going to be like four, five, six years before we see any like change. So it's the long march. Man. And to, uh, to address the second point too, like making your own. Always, it's always a good idea to try to make your own stuff, right? Anyone who has a creative idea should try to push through it. Most people will fail. That is simply just the nature of the industry. But you should try. You, you won't know if what you're trying to do will be a success unless you try, right? Right. But how do you make another Star Wars today? How do you compete with Disney? How do you even begin to compete with Disney? You know, you don't have a billion dollars to burn on marketing. You, you, hell, even just the production of concept art is going to cost thousands of dollars. All of the hundreds of writing hours. You're not even, you're not, you're not even at the starting block yet. And Disney has spiraled the earth 15 times. Right. Yeah, and it's, it's extremely daunting for sure. Do you, are there any Warhammer? Are there any Warhammer competitors? I mean, you said it yourself. This like this is the like this is like what's the market share of Warhammer 40k and Games Workshop? Is it you know 80%? Not like what what are we talking here? 
uh, more. Um, there, there are no competitors. Uh, the only things that exist are niche games, like uh, Bolt Action has a little bit of a following, uh, Kings of War has a little bit of a following, but none of these are, these don't have their own stores. They don't have their own like big market audience. Half of the time, they'll play games in the Games Workshop stores. Like the market share of Games Workshop is crushingly large. Um, they they are wargaming. Wow. But the fact like, that they're games... BattleTech, like that's a good example. Like BattleTech, BattleTech used to be bigger than Warhammer. Now. It it is again like a niche of a niche. Hmm. Well, I understand that I understand that the problem, right? I see the see it, and I'm looking for the solution here. Like that's that's where my mind goes. How do you solve this? How do you create an alternative? You know, even if you even if you go in and you own, you know, point one percent of the market, maybe that can eventually become point three percent of the market, and then one percent of the market. Um, and and you know you grow, but the reality is is that nothing is going to change unless people speak with their wallets. You mentioned Bob Iger right, and him saying like, "Well, well we, we had this many this many misses in a row. We got to take a look at things, and we got to kind of remove our our thought process and political nature from from our movies." Until people like not just kind of sort of remove themselves from from Warhammer, like all the way remove themselves from the hobby and spending money and not supporting it, will anything be changed here? No. Um, it has to be with the wallets. Um, now, the, the thing there is it's a very long-term thing again because voting with your wallet uh, is good in a small context. Like if, if, you're, um, if there's 100 people that shop at the same store, you choosing to not shop at the store is a 1% drop in sales. But Disney, that makes a movie that releases in like how many thousands of cinemas, your wallet is 0. 0.0000000000 something percent, right? Right, right. Which is why you need to change the culture. Like that's what I've been working on. I've been trying to spread awareness of the culture of wokeism, the ideas of it, why this doesn't happen in isolation, why this is all part of the same political agenda. And that's why we need to stand up against it. Because you need to make the very idea of woke, the word itself needs to become poisonous. And we have gotten very far in doing so. Like woke is now generally recognized by the normal populace to not be a good thing. It's, it's a curse word now. And that's how you work with the wallet today, by changing the culture, by going, if, if the movie has diverse in it, if it's equitable, equity, ESG, DEI, whatever, people look at them and go, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that. We need to turn those words into the Nazis of 2024. The incredibly inclusive Nazis. <laughs> Unironically. Okay. Have yeah. you heard about a, a, a company called Black Girl Gamers? Oh, yeah. Ah. We're very familiar with Black Girl Gamers. Yes. You Absolutely. will probably have seen their site then, because they are a, a DEI company that promises to introduce DEI equity and inclusion into sites, right? Yes, yes. And yet they themselves proudly boast they're 100% Black-owned, they're 100% female-owned. How diverse is that exactly? Yes, extremely di diverse, both in uh, demographics and, of, and in thought, I'm sure, which is great. Absolutely. You know? And again, repressive tolerance. Herbert Marcuse, hundred percent minority operated. Fantastic! That's incredible. You're fighting the white supremacy. One hundred percent white operated. Ooh, racist, bigoted, cruel, white supremacist. Well established. One hundred percent. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's there's a lot there. Is there anything? Is there any closing before we get to super chats? Are there any <laughs> any like closing remarks you want to say about this? Like, what's the next step? Your general thoughts. Obviously, you have a. If you want more on this, you, you said, Arch, you just released a video over on your channel. Okay. Um, I, I'd like to steal a quote from the opposition, from the progressives here. Uh, Do not let this discourage you, let this radicalize you. Because that's what you need to do. You got to look at it and you got to be like, we're not losing. That's not the lesson you need to take away. We are simply going to need to fight on a little bit harder. 
Make your own stuff. If you have the resources and the time to do so, make your own stuff. In fact, I am making my own stuff. I have a super secret project uh, where I am making my very own war game setting for myself. You know, And not everyone can do that. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of money. Uh, but if you can and you have the interest and the passion, absolutely consider doing it. Even if there is, even if you're going to have to go up against Disney, even if you're going to have to go up against the Goliath, it's better to do something than nothing. 